Hello everyone, Denise here. Today we are going to make these beautiful necklaces. Let's get started. So the materials that we will need to make this uh, necklace, one or the other, the actual necklace is the same, it's just the charms that are different on these. We will need some, um, I used worsted weight for yarn. This is ZZ Twist by lionbrand.com. I bought this online before it was available in stores and I had a review video on that if you'd like to see that. So this yarn, you only need just a small amount. This skein of yarn is 246 yards or 225 meters. It is a medium worsted weight four. The recommended hook size is a J. However, for this project, we are going to use an H hook. The reason I use an H hook is because uh, the stitches get a little sloppy with the J hook and you don't want sloppy stitches when you're doing jewelry. So it's just a minimum, minimal amount of this yarn. This color is gray and uh, this other color here is, it is called cranberry. Same exact yarn, just a different color. Um, then we will need some um, charms. If you want, you do not have to have charms. You could just place a bead here if you just wanted a bead, like say just a simplistic type look, you could just do a bead there. Okay, and these, these I bought online, these I bought online. Um, it's been quite a while since I bought those. I will try to find the links um, for those charms. This charm actually reminded me of the tree on uh, Game of Thrones, so I believe that that charm is called possibly the Tree of Life. Not sure. This is just a um, vines with flowers on it. I just thought they were really pretty and would make um, nice necklace pieces. The closures we are going to use... Um, I'm going to make the silver one today, but for this one, I would use this closure, and that is something I bought at Walmart. This you would attach to one side, and then this you would attach to the other side of your necklace, and then this just hooks in. Very easy, uh, easy to do by yourself as well. This one that I'm going to use on the silver one is what they call a toggle closure and you would put this on one end, this on the other end, and then this goes up in, and it toggles closed. And that actually, I think, is a more secure closure, um, but it's also harder to do yourself. But you can do it, because I've done it um, for me. So I'm going to get started on this tutorial. Like I said, I'm going to do the gray necklace um, and uh, attach the gray charm and then I will show you how to do uh, the closure on on the end of this design. I forgot to mention that you will need a pair of scissors and something to leave in your ends as well and attach the uh, the toggle closure or whatever closure you decide to use. Okay so let's get started. We need to make a slip knot and then we need to chain 81. So I will meet up with you in just a second when I have 81 chains. Now that I have 81 chains, I am going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So this is the first chain, this is the second chain. I'm going to single crochet in that stitch. And then I am going to single crochet in the next 19 chains. Once I have those 19 single crochets, now I am going to do a half double crochet in the next three stitches. So one half double crochet in the stitch one half double crochet in this stitch, and then a half double crochet in the next stitch. Okay, so after those three half double crochets, we are going to do 16 double crochets. So each one of the next 16 chains is going to get a double crochet in it. Okay. 
After those 16 double crochets, we are now going to do our middle stitch here. That will be the middle of the necklace. It will be one double crochet, chain two, and a double crochet in the same stitch. See, it's just a small little V stitch. Okay, after we're done with that, our middle stitch, which is a double crochet, chain two, double crochet, then we are going to move on to the other side of the necklace, which will be identical to what we just did on this side. So we need to do 16 double crochets. Okay, so we have 16 double crochets. Now to match the other side, we will need to do three half double crochets. So one half double crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Then we are going to do 20 single crochets. So in the next 20 chains, we will do 20 single crochets. Now we have the first row done. And it should look a little something like this. Just a really large V. Okay, so now we are going to go on to row two. So for row two, we are going to chain one and we are going to turn and we are going to put a single crochet in the same stitch right here that we just did our chain one. And in the next 19 stitches. Nineteen single crochets done after we did our first single crochet. Then we are going to do a half double crochet in the next three stitches. Now if this sounds familiar, it should. This is just like our previous row. So we are going to do a half double crochet in that stitch, this stitch, and the next stitch. So now we are going to move on to our double crochets. And in this row, we're going to put a double crochet in the next 17 stitches because in the first row, we only had 16, but then we added the middle stitch. So the next 17 double crochets, go ahead and do a double crochet stitch. Now we are at our middle stitch and we are going to do the same thing that we did in our row one and we are going to do a double crochet in our chain two space and then we are going to chain two and put a double, <laughs> another double crochet in that same space. So we are just mimicking what we did in our round or our row one in our row two. For the middle stitch we are going to increase a bit and that helps us get that nice um, split to where it looks like a V when we wear it. Okay, so now we are going to do the same thing on this side that we did on this side. We are going to do 17 double crochets, three half double crochets, and then 20 single crochets. And I will meet you at the end of row two. Starting on row three, we are going to chain one and turn our work. We are going to single crochet in the same space as our chain one and in the next 19 stitches just like we did on row one and row two. We have our 19 single crochets after our first single crochet, so 20 total single crochets. Now we are going to do three half double crochets just like we've been doing. And now we are going to do 18 double crochets in the next 18 stitches. Okay, now we are to our middle stitch again. 
we are going to double crochet into that middle chain two space and then we are going to chain one and then we are going to get our charm now you need to hold your chain here that you just made and I'm going to get the charm and I am going to just put it through the loop here because my charm is big enough to go through there. I'm going to get my hook I'm going to put it back on that loop. Okay, cinch it up a bit so that we are at a normal loop on our hook. And then we are going to double crochet in that same middle stitch again. Okay, now we are going to mirror what we did on the first side, which is to put a double crochet in each of the next 18 stitches three half double crochets, and then 20 single crochets, and I will meet up with you at the end. Okay, we are at the end of our row three. We are going to cut our yarn a little bit long, and we are going to pull through so that we can attach our toggle closure. Now, I am going to tie the two ends together. This is where we started and where we ended going to tie that into a knot here and then I am going to attach the toggle closure to this side. So since this is so small I'm going to go ahead and try to just put the yarn through the toggle closure. Wow, I got it. <laughs> okay, so I am going to tie a knot to secure it on this end, and then you would just weave your end in normal. Weave it in normal so that uh, your, your tails aren't showing. You would just go ahead and weave it up in. And then the other side you will need a piece of yarn for, since this end does not have any ends so we just need a piece of yarn and we need to take our you could do the needle of course or you could do like just what I did and push it go ahead and push it through um, the closure itself I don't know if this needle actually goes through the closure aha it does okay so then we need to attach this to the end of the yarn and what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it to one corner like that. Then I'm going to put the hook in the other corner. This will kind of mimic what we did on the other side. See how that's going? Then if we go ahead and do a tie at this end. Good knot to keep it secure, not like it's going to get yanked on while it's on your neck. And then you would go ahead and weave in your ends on that end too. So I'm gonna weave in the ends really quick and meet up with you. So to close this toggle closure, you slide the bar in like this, you pull up a little bit, and there you have it. That's a toggle closure. You can find these at Walmart, Joanne, uh, Michaels, Hobby Lobby. You can find them anywhere. They will be in the jewelry section. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I have a surprise for you guys. One winner will receive two skeins of the yarn, the charms and the toggle closures. If you leave a comment below and you're a subscriber and if you tell me if you've ever made crochet jewelry before, I will choose a winner on May 30th. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, guys. Bye.